right, gang, let's take a look at uh, data from the Titanic. So here is a table showing who survived the sinking of the Titanic based on whether they were crew members or passengers booked in first, second, or third class staterooms. So you see a whole bunch of data, all right, here from the, the Titanic um, boat. I shouldn't call it boat, it was more like a ship. Um, so we've got all the folks that survived and what class status they had, or maybe they were crew members, and the folks that passed away, right, their class status and whether or not they were crew members. So let's read this. It says, if an individual is drawn at random, what is the probability that we will draw a crew member? So this question actually doesn't have anything to do with chapter 11. This is a chapter three question. And I'll tell you chapter, a, excuse me, parts A and B are chapter three questions. So those are review questions. So I would suggest pause for a little bit and see if you can answer A and B on your own. We're getting sort of close to the final. We've only got a couple of chapters left or really about one and a half chapters left. So see if you can remember how to calculate these probabilities. Pause the video, come back to it. I wanna recommend you think about your notation. All right, so if we take a look at this, anytime you see probability, right, since chapter three, we've been saying capital P with some stuff in parentheses, and it looks like I want the probability that I draw a crew member. Okay, now, ooh, I threw my eraser. Uh, if I want a crew member, again, it's going to be a fraction. We're on a table. We did table problems back in chapter three. We had Venn diagrams, tree diagrams, and the table problem. This is the table. So let's take a look at how many crew members I had. It looks like I had 885 successes. And again, success in this case is being a crew member. You see my little quote marks going. So 885 out of the grand total of 2201. And I know it's been a while, but with most of our probabilities on those table problems in chapter three, the denominator is this number in the bottom right-hand corner. The exception to that was when we had conditional probabilities, and then we had that, that formula, formula number two, and we had a probability in the numerator and a probability in the denominator, and some denominators canceled out. But for the most part, your probability, uh, any probability question coming out of um, a table has that denominator, the numbers in the bottom right-hand corner, yet with the exception being the conditional probability. All right, so if I crunch this number on my calculator, we are looking at 885 divided by 2201. Looks like we have about a 40% chance that I talked to a crew member. So 40% of the people on that boat were crew members. All right, what is the probability of, a, of randomly selecting a third class passenger who survived? So here I want probability, I want third class and survived. All right. What is the probability of selecting a third class passenger who survived? So let's take a look here. So if we go third class and survived, we remember the ands, those come from where the column and the row overlap. So let's see, third class is this column. Survival is this column, the alive folks. So if I look at where third class and survive overlap, we've got 178. So we'll go 178 over 2201. So let's see what we're looking at here. We'll go 178 out of 2201, and we have about 8%. All right, so I will say this is about 8%. All right, fantastic. So again, two review questions, just us talking about how to calculate some probabilities, reminding ourselves of where the and lives on a table, where the row and the column overlap, or I think I did that, I graphed it wrong, where the row and the column overlap. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna scoot this up. All right, and then let's take a look at part C. Part C says, if someone's chances of surviving were the same, all right, here's same, so if there's equality, regardless of their status on the ship, how many members of the crew would you have expected to survive? All right, so this is starting to go more into a chi-squared type of question. So before we get to the chi-squared part of things, Let's figure out what the variable of this problem is and where we are on this giant flow chart, okay? So now we had 2,201 people on that boat and I gotta figure out what was varying amongst them. Was it numerical or was it categorical? So if I look at this two-way table, here, whoops, it moved it a little bit. If I look at this two-way table, I do see a bunch of numbers, 
But again, these are all frequency counts, right? Because the variable here, one of the things I kept track of was whether or not they were alive or dead. And then I kept track of their class status, right? And both alive or dead and class status, those are categorical variables. So if I'm going through this flow chart, I would head down here, I have categorical variables. And I actually had, I, I get that we had the one sample, but we had a lot of groups inside of that. So I actually had eight groups because I had four classes um, or four categories in terms of your class status, right? First, second, third, and crew. And then I had two categories on survival status, alive or dead. So I actually had eight groups or eight categories in there. So I'm down to the chi-squareds. All right, and then I gotta decide, did I have one row or one column of observed data or did I get a table? And I think you can see we have a table, right? So I'm gonna run that chi-squared test for independence. All right, so with that, let's type up, or at least not type it, but write up what we have. So, so far I'm in prop land. I've got frequencies, right? These are all frequencies. Anytime I see frequencies, I'm gonna think, well, I'm gonna turn that into a relative frequency and turn it into a proportion. So I have two categorical variables. Right, we have class status and we have survival status. All right, so ultimately I have eight categories. And you can see the eight cells here if we ignore the totals, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna use a chi-squared test for independence, all right? And then I get into, finally getting back to C, they ask us for the expected counts of this survival, or excuse me, how many crew members would you have expected to survive? So I want expected crew and survival. And again, you can hear the null in here. If the chances, if someone's chances of surviving were the same, regardless of their status. Well, another way of saying that is class status and survival status are independent, or you could say class status and survival status have no relationship, or you could say class status and survival status have no association, right? So you have three options, but hopefully we can hear the null coming out of there. All right, and ultimately they're asking us for an expected count. So let's see, if I were to put my pencil somewhere, we have crew, and survive, here they are, right? I'm in that cell. So let me do expected and I'll put crew and survive. All right, so here we go, crew and survive. So I need to do row total times column total over grand total. So if we look at row total, it's 710. Column total is 885 and grand total, or the total surveyed, was 2201. So let's, let's write this out so we have it, right? It'll always be for expected counts, row total times column total over your grand total. All right, so let's see what we had. Again, I'm gonna put my pencil here. My row total was 710. My column total was 885 and my grand total was 2201. So let's see how many crew members we expected to survive. Again, if, oops, my batteries are low, if class status had nothing to do with survival status. So 710, 885 divided by 2201. So I expected 285.5, I'll go to one decimal today, 285.5, okay, now, Common notation is we put this in parentheses here. And I want us to just think about this difference. Right? Look at, we expected 285.5 crew members to survive. I want you to look at the difference between what we expected and what I observed. There was a difference of 70, almost 74, right? I expected almost 74 more crew members to survive uh, than actually did, pending class status had nothing to do with survival status. That's a huge discrepancy, right? You're off by 73 and relatively speaking, 73 out of 285, that's almost 25%, right? If we were to make that a ratio, it's pretty, it's a little bit more actually than 25%. So we were off by a, a large percentage here. Okay, so with that, let's take a look at part D. All right, let me scoot this up so we can see 
what's going on here. So this is going to ask us, is there a relationship between a person's status on the Titanic and whether or not they survived the sinking, perform an appropriate test? Okay, so let's go through this. This is going to be the chi-squared test for independence. Now, I had said on the previous page, you can skip step one for this test only. All right, so we're allowed to skip step one just for this test. Every other hypothesis test, you're gonna be writing out mu's or p's, but for this one, we can skip it. So let's go to the null and the alternate. All right, now this is, is there a relationship? So I said before there were three options, all right? And you could choose which of the three you wanted to go with. So you could say, you have three options here. You could say class status and survival status are independent. You could say class status and survival status have no association. Or you could say class status and survival status have no relationship. And I'm going to opt, even though I was saying before I usually pick one of the first two, because there's the word relationship here, I'm just going to pick relationship. And you don't have to. You could say, like I said, any of these three are fine. I'm just going to mimic the words that were set up in the problem. Okay, so I'm going to put here class status and survival status have no relationship. And then the alternate would be that class status and survival status have a relationship. So I only have to change one word in going from null to alternate. All right, four is our, our alpha. I wasn't given one, so we'll default to 0.05. All right, I'm gonna put my assumptions over here. I'm just gonna try and be as efficient as I can with space. So for my assumptions, I need a random sample or a sample that represents the population. And this was not a random sample. This is the population. This, were the pe this was the people on the boat. So we're gonna definitively say whether or not status and, uh, excuse me, survival status and class status had a relationship. So I'm gonna put here random sample, hard pass on that. This is, the entire population. This is the census. All right, now in terms of expected counts, let's see if our expected counts are greater than or equal to five. I'm not gonna put a check yet. I, I wanna make sure that's correct. So we're gonna go through this and if I can put the check, I'll come back here and do it. Now, I'm gonna use my calculator. I'm gonna scroll back over here and I'm gonna use my calculator to help me jump to the end. Like I'm gonna get my calculator output, it's gonna to jump to the end of the, the question, and then I'm gonna use that calculator output screen to inform my write-up. Okay, so taking a look at this, let's go in to our matrix. All right, now you can see right there, I've got three by twos. Uh, this was back from example nine, no problem. So let me go edit out matrix A. Now, you have to decide here, you can see you have four categories, of class status and two categories of survival status. So let me go ahead and put, I had four here, two here, which means ultimately your matrix that you're gonna put into a, your calculator is either a four by two or a two by four. Now you do rows first and then columns, but let's say you weren't sure. And let's say you also picked the wrong one. Let's say you went four by two. I hope you can see that this matrix, the way it's set up, right? You can see it's longer than it is wide. That does not match the one in front of you. So if that happens to you, no problem. Just enter it in the other way, two by four. And then you can see that it matches. You see the little dots over here and the little dash, it's saying you can go further. So let me go ahead and enter my observed data and never enter the totals, you don't need them. So 212, 202, 118, 178, and then 673. 23, 167, and 528. Okay, and let me just double check and make sure I didn't make a typo on any of these. All right, they're all in there, great. So once you do that, it's a quick little calculator button. Go back to your home screen. I'm gonna clear all this out. We're gonna hit stat, go to tests. 
Now, again, our test is so far at the bottom, it's actually more efficient to scroll up. You wanna skip over the Goff test if you have it, all right? The TI-83s don't, but if you're on an 84 and you have it, just skip over that. We're on the chi-squared test. This is the test for independence. All right, and all we have to do is hit calculate, all right? I'll come back to that number in just a moment. I'm gonna use that in a bit, but why I really wanted to go through this is if you go back into the matrix, you can see matrix B now has the correct dimensions. Let me go edit matrix B. So head over to edit, but scroll down. And here are all of my expected counts. We had already done this one. We knew the crew members that were alive. So let me start filling these in. It looks like I expected only 104.8 first class passengers to make it. And look at how many did, 202. That's almost double, right? This is evidence against the null, man, because that is, it's a huge percentage increase. All right, it looks like here we had what, 91.9? And if I go to the right, I had 227.7. I head down 478.3 and 599.5. So first of all, I can see they're all greater than or equal to five. So I'm gonna be through my deal breaker assumption. So no problem there. But I also wanna just start to point out some things. Um, if I were to add up these two numbers, right? The expected crew that made it and the expected crew that didn't make it, they would add up to 885, right? So if we were just to check that, I can go back here and do 285.5 plus 599.5 and you can see it'd be 885. So if the null was true, this is what we would have expected. And now we can contrast that with what we actually observed. Right? Or I could add up this bottom row. If I added up these four parentheses in these, this bottom row, they should add to 1491. So let's check it for a moment. All right, so I will take 599.5, add to it 220.2, add to it, what do we got? 191, no, 193.1, I believe, yeah. And then 478.3. And what does it add up to? Oh, it looks like there's a slight round off error or maybe I made a typo, but 1491. Did I make a typo? It's entirely possible. 599.5, 220.2. Well, I'm not seeing my typo. So maybe there's just a slight round off error. Okay, that's fine, no biggie there. But you can see if the null was true, this is what we would have expected to see happening. And you can see some major discrepancies. This is one of the most glaring ones. I expected 222 folks to die that were in first class and only 123 did. And this is a pretty um, huge gap also, proportionally speaking, right? This is a gap of, I don't know, 36, or I should say like 26, excuse me. It's not as huge a gap, proportionally speaking, um, but this is a gigantic gap, okay. So at the end of all of this, I'm gonna go back to my write-up and I'm gonna say that, hey, my expected counts were all greater than or equal to five. So I'm good on that front. So let me check this off. All right, so for step six, I'll put this down here. I'm gonna be on the chi-squared distribution. All right, for step seven, I'm gonna the, run the chi-squared test for independence. All right, for step eight, I need degrees of freedom. Now, degrees of freedom is always number of rows minus one times number of columns minus one. And if you remember, we had two rows and we had four columns. So I can subtract one from each of those numbers and I can find out that my degrees of freedom is really one times three, which is three. Again, number of rows minus one times number of columns minus one. And if I go back into my matrix, right, it was a two by four. So if I subtract one from each of these, this would be one times three, and one times three is three. And that's all fine and good, but you could also, if you saw it, you could get it from your calculator's output screen. There it is, degrees of freedom are three. Okay, so now let's head over to our chi-squared test statistic. So I'll put that here, right, chi-squared 
is always the sum of the observed minus the expected squared over the expected. Now I'm gonna do the plus dot, dot, dot because I don't want to write each of my contributors out. I'm gonna start with, if I go back to my table, let me scooch this back down again. All right, so if I go back to this table, I will start with the first cell and I'll start with alive and crew and I'm gonna go plus dot, dot, dot all the way through and I'm gonna end with third and dead. So when I do observe minus expected up here, it'll be 212 minus 285.5. I'll square that difference to make it positive and put it in proportion to 285.5. And then again, I'll plus dot, dot, dot all the way through to here. I'm gonna do observed 528 minus expected. I'll square that difference to make sure it's positive. And then I'll put it in proportion to the expected 478.3. So let's see what we've got going on here. All right, let me get this up so we can take a look at it. Oops, all right. So let's start writing up our chi-squared test statistics. So again, we've got alive and crew. This was 212 minus 285, oops, 285.5. I'm gonna square that difference, make sure it's positive, put it in proportion or in ratio to the expected count. So there's my first contributor plus dot, 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 plus my last contributor, and that was the dead third class passengers. So we have 528 minus 478.3 squared, and I will put that in ratio to 478.3. All right, this is technically step 10. And from my calculator's output screen, I saw that that was, geez, that was 187.8, that is huge. Okay. So we've got that. All right, so for step 11 for my p-value, I'm gonna do this the long way just to practice it, but I'm still gonna just cut to the chase on my calculator and get the answer. So if I was gonna do this the long way, p-values are always probabilities. It looks like I'm on the chi-squared distribution, so my, my letter will be chi-squared. This symbol here, you're always picking between greater than and less than. We will always go greater than because chi-squareds are always positive. So we'll always be doing a right-tailed test. And I've got a gigantic test statistic from step 10. All right, so we would go chi-squared, CDF, low, high, degrees of freedom was three. Now you can see my p-value here, right? I got it. It's not 1.8. Please don't ignore the e to the negative 40, right? It's actually 0.000000. 39 times out, and then the number 1829. It's basically zero, because there was definitely a relationship between your class status and whether or not you made it off the Titanic. Now, if you had run this with chi-squared CDF, you could have, right? We could have gone 187.8 to infinity, and then three degrees of freedom, and you're gonna see a number pretty close to the one we just got on our calculator screen. I think we had 1.829, right? This is 1.823, so it's only off at like the 43rd decimal place. It's pretty darn similar. So basically, for all intents and purposes, our p-value is zero, right? There is no chance that class survival stat, oh, excuse me, class status and survival status are independent. There's definitely a relationship between them. And again, we don't even have the option of making an error here because because this is the census, this is we're, it's going to be definitive. Now for step 12, I'm gonna use my calculator and let's go ahead and draw it. Oh, it looks like I still have a box plot on, but there's my extremely skewed right graph. I gotta put 187 way, I mean, you can't even see it because this is one, two, three, four, five, this is about 10, 12 units um, long on the x-axis. 187 is just off the screen. All right, and let me get that box plot. Let me turn that off while I'm here. So again, if I wanted to run this, I'm just gonna copy that graph onto my calculator, and not onto my calculator, excuse me, onto my pencil. I can't use my words, onto my paper. <laughs> All right, so let me go ahead and copy this over and we'll get that happening. All right, so step 12.
it's going to look something like that. I'm going to put 187.8 way over here. All right, I had three degrees of freedom, so there's that. All right, and my p-value is zero, so I'm going to shade zero area under that curve. All right, for step 13, we are going to reject because our p-value is less than alpha, we will reject H naught. All right, we do have evidence of a relationship between class status and survival status. So let's write this. There is sufficient evidence of a relationship between class status and survival status on the Titanic. All right, or you could say there is sufficient evidence. You could have written here instead of relationship, you could have written an association. All right, so that's another version of a write-up here. You could have also said, and let me go ahead and give you a different way to write this. You could have said there is sufficient evidence that class status and survival status on the Titanic are not independent. So if you had chosen to write the version of the null and alternate that had independence in it, this would have been your, um, your conclusion, right? We have evidence that class status and survival status are not independent. I mean, it is clear that the more money you had, the more likely you were to make it off the boat. And if you ever go watch Titanic, again, I watched it so many times in the theater, right? Uh, here's Leo on his boat. I can't draw, but he loves to tell you that he is king of the world. All right, I watched this movie in 97. Then I went and watched it again when it came back out in 3D a few years ago. I own it, still love it. Still, still don't want that boat to sink at the end. All right, guys, so with that, we're gonna take a look at some multiple choice questions next and practice chi-squared tests for independence. All right, see ya, bye.